Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Catatonia's YouTube channel, Sorry, Me, the Mighty Cryo. This is Bosses Only, the video series where we look at just the bosses from a dungeon, because you're not stuck on trash, you're stuck on bosses. From the Waking Flame DLC, this is the Dread Cellar. Why is it called the Dread Cellar? Because Judge Dread, after a busy day of uh, being law, goes home to his fancy house. Or more specifically, the room under his fancy house is Wine Cellar, which he loves and uh, protects viciously from uh, sneaky burglars. The Dread Cellar! And so uh, here we are going into the Dread Cellar through this door, where we are going to find ourselves face to face with boss number one, whenever this loading screen goes away. Any time now, here we are. Okay. Boss number one is a secret boss. What do you mean it's a secret boss, the mighty Crino? How are we supposed to get to it? I don't know. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm just here to tell you how to kill it. So, get to the secret boss somehow, and I'll tell you how to kill it. Eventually. Eventually it will spawn after this NPC says all her stuff. I can't remember what she says, but it's something along the lines of blah, blah, blah. Get ready to fight a, a, a spooky spirit. So, uh, any time now. Oh, that's right. The tank has to go press a button over there to actually make it spawn. So, uh, let's do that, tank. Please go press the button. Press the button! The button will be pressed eventually and then the man will spawn. Meanwhile, uh, we'll just hang out here looking at the... Oh wait, it's because the NPC was still talking. Sorry, Tank. I was just... Uh... See, I'm not Tank this time. Okay, here's the man. So, Tank will go behind him, stab him, turn him away. Everybody else will stand behind him and attack. Try not to stack on each other because the Tank's going to swing his big beefy hammer thing and a meteor will come raining down and it really hurts. And if you're all stacked together, it'll hurt even more and it'll kill you. So just, you know, spread out. Or if you don't, well, that'll happen. So, uh, somebody's dead. Well, that was a practice. But that's pretty much it. Every so often, little flame Atronax will spawn. The tank will just taunt them and they'll shoot the tank. Meanwhile, the tank will keep the boss turned away from everybody and absorb all those heavy attacks by blocking and uh, dodge rolling and blah, blah, blah. And all you have to do is shoot him in the back and don't stack together. Very dank. He's dead. So we got a buff of some kind. That's going to be useful later, probably. Let's go through this portal, which leads us to this loading screen. I mean, the next boss, the Scorian Broodlord. Well, he's horrible. Let's go activate hard mode to make it even more horrible, because uh, why not? I mean, we already apparently don't have a healer in this group, so why not make it even more difficult? So you just saw him drop down out of that portal in the sky there. There he is, a big Yagra Veladreth snail with legs looking monster thing over there. He's going to be our target. Looks like the uh, group is talking strat. So uh, while they're doing that, I'll tell you a little bit about the boss and what he does. At certain points as you deplete his health, he's going to climb back into that portal you saw him drop out of originally and appear somewhere else in the room and start attacking a big stone pillar willy thing. And you're going to need to destroy that. It is the priority target of the whole fight because while the boss is sucking on it, it's going to do progressively more and more damage to the group. It's like some sort of channeling thing. So destroy that willy. Destroy it as quickly as possible. Did I say willy? I meant pillar. Anyway, let's begin attacking the man. What else happens? At certain points during the fight, he's going to summon adds. If you're just on regular veteran, he'll summon this blue Zivkin gentleman who does lightning attacks. But if you're on hard mode, he's also going to summon a big flaming skeleton colossus monster thing. There it is over there. The tank should taunt these things and bring them over near the boss if possible. But the ads are the priority target. Don't worry about the boss for now. This isn't a DPS race. Just attack the ads. Kill them. So we've got rid of the skeleton. It looks like the Zivkin man's already dead. Let's get back to attacking the boss. At a certain point soon, the boss is going to climb up through a mystical portal in the sky, like I said, and appear somewhere in the room and start eating one of those stone pillar things. Destroy the pillar, because as long as it takes, the boss is sucking on it, and while he's doing that, everybody's taking a tick after tick after tick of damage that gets worse and worse and worse. This pillar thing here, this glowy thing, this is your priority target. Destroy it, and bloody well destroy it now. As soon as that's done, the boss is going to head back towards the tank, who should have its aggro. The tank will also have taunted a couple of other adds that always appear when the boss does that teleport into a portal thing. That'll be a red Zivkin with a maul that does flaming attacks, and one of those uh, dinosaur Daedroth men things, whatever they are. So, remember, the adds are the second most important thing after the pillar willies. So, kill the pillar willies, then kill the adds, then you can go back to attacking the boss. As you can see, the next lot of adds have already spawned. A blue Zivkin and a flaming skeleton man. It's always in that order. Blue Zivkin, flaming skeleton, and then it'll be a red Zivkin and a dinosaur thing. So make sure that you kill them, then you can attack the boss. You'll see these spinning circles of doom coming out of the spider. So there's a cone AoE that comes from the spider's mouth. If the tank wedges himself right up in the mouth, 
uh, you can usually mitigate all of that and the circles don't even seem to appear, but I don't know if that's a bug or if it's just a feature of the fight. Okay, he's just climbed into the portal, out he pops in another random area. Here comes another pillar willy, let's beat it up. Remember what I said, while the monster's eating it, everybody in the group is taking progressively more and more damage. Destroy that willy as soon as possible. Very dank, it is destroyed. Go back, defeat the adds on the, on the tank. Another dinosaur and another red Zivkin. You saw that? What happens is every time you destroy a willy, the boss picks a person at random, sucks them in and starts eating them. He will kill them if you do not bash interrupt. So bash or use crushing shock if you've got that on your bar, which you probably should for this uh, fight because it's very dank. And then continue attacking the boss. Up comes the bads. It's a blue Zivkin, which means somewhere there's going to be a flaming skeleton monster as well. Destroy them both. They are now the priority. Whenever ads come up, they are the most important thing. Kill them before you continue attacking the boss. Somebody had a whoopsie. Let's see if we can get a res. Nope, we've been sucked in. Hopefully somebody bashed. They did. Very dank. Let's go back to attacking the ad. Everybody's dead. And this is where that crystal from the previous boss fight comes in handy. If you did that secret boss, that crystal becomes interactable. The one that you just saw there on the left. And the tank synergized it. And now the previous secret boss has spawned. But this time he's on your side. He will help you. He does all the same attacks. And I think they do just about the same damage. The difference is if you're standing close to him. There'll be a synergy option. Synergize it and his meteor attack will happen. It'll come down and it'll damage not you. But the adds. You just saw it there. So it's pretty dank. Make sure you make use of it. The other feature of that is if everybody else is down, or if even if one person is down, if you interact with those crystals, everybody gets a free res. It's just like the Necro Resurrect ulti, so it's really useful. Which is why I always recommend, don't use that uh, interactable crystal right at the beginning of the fight, but if you need it, it's there, and it comes in absolutely clutch to help everybody out, because everybody gets a free res, and you get this guy helping you out. And as you do more and more secret bosses throughout the dungeon, you'll get more and more crystals, which means more and more chances for free reses for everyone who's dead in the group, and extra secret bosses who this time switch to your side to help you out. Meanwhile, continue attacking the boss. It's the same routine. He spawns a blue Zivkin and a flaming skeleton man. He climbs up through a portal and he'll appear somewhere else in the room and start eating a, a big stone pillar willy thing. Destroy that pillar. That is now your priority target. Once it is destroyed, the boss is going to run back to the middle and he's going to suck in a random person, bash or interrupt him to stop him from killing that person and kill the other ads he spawned, which will be a red Zivkin with a maul doing flame attacks and a dinosaur man who blows fire everywhere. It all really hurts. Remember to stay close and try to kite between all those spinning circles of uh, poo that come out of his mouth, bash when he sucks somebody in, and you'll have him dead in no time, just like that. Fantastic! Loot your lockpicks and all your other garbage and make your way through this door over here. No, actually, turn around and shoot some electrical bullets at those people. Uh, because, uh, to hell with those people. Anyway, through the door we go. Which leads us... to the next boss! This is the second secret boss, the Undertaker, who is a Lich, kind of like an Orioneth in Crypt of Hearts 2. So the first thing obviously that we have to do, and again I didn't tell you how to get here, I'm just going to tell you how to kill it. First thing we've got to do, synergize the fire, take them to the place where the fire goes, and then the NPC in the middle there, the ghostly lady, will say a whole bunch of boring blah 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 blah. Wait for her to finish it, and then the tank can synergize the crystal, it's a blue crystal this time as you can see. And once that has been synergized, the boss will spawn. Here he is, very hunky. Look at him, beat him up. Tank is going to do the same thing as the other secret boss. Turn him away from the group. Everybody smack him in the back. Don't be too close to each other because he does do big AoE circles and lich crystals and so forth. He's also going to spawn everyone's favorite 90s toys, skeleton warriors. So when they spawn, they'll be all around the edge of the room. The tank's going to taunt them. They'll shoot all their arrows at the tank and you won't have to worry. Just smack the boss to hell until he dies. It's a very straightforward fight. Loot your lockpicks and rubbish, and you have acquired another crystal you can interact with in later main boss fights. So, we saw the red crystal from the first secret boss was able to be used during Scorian Bloodlord, and now here, on Cyrone and Artelian, the next main boss, there are two crystals. There's the red one, you can see it at the back, and on the other side of the room, there's going to be the green crystal, 
which represents the lich boss, you'll be able to use that. So if everybody's dead, somebody is alive, they can interact with it and they will summon the corresponding boss and give everybody a free res. It's very dank. So what does this boss do? Well, the worst thing is the two Atronachs on either side of the room. You can stack them on the boss. Obviously, we've turned on hard mode and just kill them, but he keeps respawning them. We've already summoned the uh, red fire boss, so that's going to help us do some extra damage because you can synergize and get his meteor attack. The worst thing about this boss is the red poo things that come. And you'll see that momentarily. They come streaking down the room and there's gaps between them. I prefer to actually stand at the side of the room, this angle you're seeing now, and sidestep between these waves. If you touch those, it is instant death. You need to dodge around them. I don't tend to spin my camera. I tend to treat it like an 80s arcade game and just sort of sidestep between them while I can see them on screen at all times and know where they are. As long as the tank is holding taunt on all the ads and the boss, all you've got to do is skip between them, throw the occasional AoE at him, and eventually these waves will stop coming and you'll have a big chance to do a whole bunch of damage. The other thing you need to watch out for, he summons like the spooky ghosts that are made of like lightning. Those are pretty awful. You'll need to kill them really quickly. He also throws skulls at the group and you'll know if one is coming for you because you're going to have like a red glow on you. And so you'll want a dodge roll. You can try to block, but ideally you want a dodge roll. Anyway, I... Uh, they killed the boss so fast, I couldn't even tell you all the mechanics in time, but that is the gist of it. You saw how it was done, so uh, just do that. And now we're on to the final secret boss. How did we get to him? The Grim Warden. It's just like Symphony of Blades, the last boss of Depths of Malatar. It's one of those great big huge uh, guys with a million arms and swords, and he does all the same attacks. He does a laser beam, he does a big spinny thing, and he summons crappy little air atronax. Now the way to do this boss, sir, Another reasonably straightforward one, but he does hurt more. The tank will taunt it, turn it away, everybody attack it. The laser beam that he does on the boss, it doesn't really hurt that much, just block it and you'll be fine. The thing you want to watch out for is when he does a great big spinning horrible circular attack. It will kill you in no time. You can pop your magma shell if you're a dragon knight, and you can mostly eat it, but ideally you want to just sort of dodge around and try to stay out of it as best as you can, because the damage from that, you just saw it, is massive and lead the boss toward the air atronax around the room because the more of them that there are the worse it gets for you so lead the boss to the ads that way the dps can cleave out the ads whilst attacking the boss and you'll also see it spawns these uh, tornadoes which suck you don't want to get knocked around by them so try to kite around them whilst keeping your focus on the boss to damage him tank will keep his back to you so if you've got the backstabber passive from champion points, you'll do a bit of extra damage. But this is the thing to really watch for, the spinning attack. As long as the tank just kites around it, you'll be fine. And this boss will go down in no time. And once he's dead, that's a third crystal, this time a white one. And during the final boss, which is going to be after this, you will have three crystals to choose from. The red one for the fireman, the green one for the lich, and the white one for this gentleman right here, who will all come to your aid, as well as give any dead people in your group a free resurrect. So save them until you absolutely need them. We've avoided tornadoes, we've killed all the air atronachs, and we've looted our lockpicks, which is super dank. Let's go through this portal over here which is going to very conveniently lead us to a loading screen. I mean, to the final boss. And let's turn on hard mode, because why not? So here we are at the Magma Incarna, the final boss of the Dread Cellar. What's so awful about this guy, I hear you asking? Everything. Everything about this man is bad. As you can see, not only does he have two hands with swords in, but he has four hands with swords in. Four hands for stealing Judge Dredd's liquor, I suppose, and wine and stuff. So what does this guy do? He does a whole bunch of awful stuff. The worst thing, well, you're going to see. One of the worst things is just his regular attack, which is called Flurry. The tank obviously is going to taunt him and try to turn him away from the group. But the thing is, this Flurry attack that he does, it's multiple smacks and then a really big smack. You need to block it or dodge roll it, or you're going to take a hell of a lot of damage, if not die. And if it hits someone who isn't the tank, yeah, they're definitely, definitely going to die. So, it looks like the group is uh, probably talking strategy or something, but I'll tell you about some other mechanics he does. There's going to come a point where he will aim 
some like laser beam things on the floor at at least three of the people in the group and then with a big swoosh he launches fire at you try to dodge roll it and you're going to have a dot on you afterward that is really really painful now you're going to rely on your healer obviously this group doesn't have a healer because they're psychopaths but ideally you'd want to have it just please bring a healer okay to keep you alive it's horrible there it is, you can see it now. See these things? It looks like Cat herself didn't get it on her, she was the lucky one. And then everybody else got it on them. Don't overlap or the damage is even worse. Separate when you get those uh, swooshy lines on you and avoid overlapping with anyone else. Now, this great big huge circle that he just does, the tank can stay in that and block and it's fine, but for everybody else, you can block it. You can dodge roll right at the moment it explodes, or you can stand in it and take some damage. It's not the most painful thing in here, even though it's like the biggest effect, but you do need to watch out for it. When he does that, some fire tornadoes appear. You can see them over there, so the tank will move the boss away from them because you don't want to stand in those because not only are they tornadoes, which are really windy, but they're made of fire, which is really hot. After a certain amount of damage, I think it's about 65%, he'll cover himself in a dome and open a portal at the end of the room. Here you go. This could lead to one of, I think it's five potential rooms. This time we got the ice room. What happens in the ice room? Do you see those icy tornadoes? Somewhere in those, there's a gap where you can roll between, or you can just kite around and keep them on the other side of you. You need to kill the pillar willy before the spider eats it, otherwise the boss gets a big buff. But uh, we're going to destroy it as quickly as possible, and once it's blown up, a portal reappears, and you can go back into the boss room to uh, fight the boss again. There he is. He's going to do his great big channeling thing. Tank is fine to stand in this. The rest of you, I guess you are as well, but you don't really want to because it does hurt a bit. One attack he does. Oh, here's the swooshy lines. Let's have a look at it again. Remember, don't overlap. Dodge roll. You can see Catatonia's got the big dot on her. It really bloody hurts. Fortunately, the healer here is doing a fantastic job. No, I'm being facetious. There is no healer, but if you've got shields, you can spam them and keep yourself alive as she just demonstrated. Very dank. Whenever you come back, there's a spider with a bunch of health. You need to kill the spider before you worry about the boss. And of course, if anybody dies, you can interact with any of the now three crystals. You've got the red one, which brings you the fireman. You've got the green one, which brings you the lich man. And you've got the white one, which brings you the man with all the swords and all the arms. Let's try to get out of that circle, because it does kind of hurt a bit. And let's go back to attacking the boss. Remember the synergy option. You can synergize your secret boss's uh, ability. And that will uh, do damage to the boss as well. Swishy line thing, avoid it, watch out for the tornadoes. You can actually dodge roll through these, or at a certain point in the row of tornadoes that go around the room, there's a hole in them, and you can uh, just stand in the hole and completely ignore that. Let's get a res if we can. Whoops, Daisy, the fire tornadoes came and uh, caused a whoopsie. But let's activate another crystal. There's another one somewhere in the room. And once it's activated, everybody will get a free res. It's very dank. Here we go. And up we get. Which one did the tank activate? It was the green one. So we've got the Lich helping us this time. His synergy, I think it spawns the Lich crystals, which is pretty useful, but you will need to keep the boss still because obviously that's an AoE attack. Oh no, I was totally lying. It's a bunch of laser beams. Well, I don't know. I've only done this like six times. The important point is, there's a lot of mechanics and you need to watch out for them. If you're not the tank, try not to be in this circle or block it. Another thing he does, this is probably the worst thing in my opinion, he'll stab all of his swords into the ground and there'll be what looks kind of like the radioactive symbol on the ground around him. As long as the tank stands in that, when it explodes, nobody dies. Okay, so we're in another of the portal rooms. This is the one with the spinning flame. First time, you will want to spin clockwise and stay between them. It's just like the uh, first arena boss in Black Rose Prison, where it goes round and round. The second time, there's more flames, but this time it doesn't move. They just pulse, so stay between them. Also, if you've summoned a crystal man before that, he'll come with you into the portal, but he'll be gone afterwards. So remember, destroy the pillar, Willy, and then come back out. We've got one more crystal available to us in this fight, and it's the uh, man with all the swords and stuff. So if we need him, we can get him. Avoid the fire tornadoes, keep attacking the boss. Watch out for those swooshy things, because they really hurt. You can dodge roll through the tornadoes, you've just seen it there. Those tornadoes hurt like absolute hell. Forgot to mention the Blompkins. You can see them all over the place. They spawn, I think, in groups of four every so often. They become priority even over the boss because they keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and they're god-awful. Just kill them. Here's the swishy thing. 
avoid that. You've got a dot on you, just try to out heal it if you can. If you've got shields, that will help. If you don't have shields, hopefully you've got a healer in your group and they should be able to keep you alive through it. Back on the boss. Again, we just came out of a portal, so we've got a spider to deal with. The spider is your next most important target after all those little blumpkins. So kill that bloody spider, because the tank's got to deal with all of this. We have synergized the crystal, and we've got the last secret boss out to help us, Mr. Many Arms. And I think he does his uh, spinny attack if you do the synergy. It's pretty damn useful. It'll help you definitely take out the blumpkins. Make sure that spider dies, then you can really focus on the boss. Just watch out for the swishy lines. And obviously watch out for the radioactive symbol. I don't think you get a very good look at it from a DPS point of view, but if you were watching from the tank's point of view, at his feet it looks like the radioactive symbol, like three little sort of triangles. There are darker ones and lighter ones. If you stand in the lighter one, you're good. If you stand in the darker one, the boom will hurt you. So just make sure you stand in the right safety spot. We've just synergized the swishy arm things, and we've actually defeated the stupid man. Take that, you son of a bitch. I hate this boss, I hate this boss, and I don't mind telling you, I really hate this boss. It's very hard, especially on hard mode. But that was really dank, we've looted our magma incarnate hat, which is cool for tanks, and our lockpicks. So that's the end. Subscribe if you like what you see, and press that bell button to be notified when I bother recording audio, you can also uh, go to Twitter, which uh, is uh, a cool thing apparently, and Instagram, which has got pictures and stuff, and uh, what else have we got? We've got YouTube, well you're already here, so hello. And don't forget, you can also check out the stream at twitch.tv forward slash catatonia. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time on Bosses Only, you, you, you handsome bugger.